thank you for joining me today on Movement Matters. I'm your host, Christine Linders, physical therapist and board certified orthopedic clinical specialist. Today, let's talk yoga. Why do we do yoga for those of us that do it? Why do we want to do yoga? For one, it can promote relaxation, flexibility, that inner mindfulness. It can help us improve our ability and capacity to participate in sports. But one of the biggest reasons that I love yoga is image number one. Let's look at that. It is the feeling that I get taking deep breaths in and deep breaths out and clearing my mind like what happens when I look at this beautiful photo. When I'm stressed out or when I'm tense or when I can't work through a problem and I do yoga even in my home and I take those deep breaths in and those deep breaths out while I'm moving, it really helps to create a space in my mind where I can process information, make decisions and not have all those things bouncing off my head. In addition to when I used to do Ironman triathlons, it helped me to avoid injuries. During this COVID-19 pandemic, many folks are trying different methods to get exercise and help their body feel better. And yoga classes are a great way because you could do it on YouTube. You could take a Zoom class. It's not the same as being with people, but you can have a little bit of that camaraderie. And a lot of, one of my friends and patients are doing more yoga. But injuries can occur if you don't maintain proper body mechanics or if you try to push your body further than it was designed to go. In this episode, we talk with Paula Lanzara, a yoga enthusiast who inspires us through her own struggles to get the most from her yoga class while feeling confident and injury-free. Welcome, Paula, and thank you so much for coming on Movement Matters today. Hi, Christine. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to talk about yoga today. It's going to be fun. I know, and I'm so excited to talk to you about it. When we were talking on Friday about yoga and you were sharing all your experiences and all your feelings about yoga, it just really hit my heart because that's yoga is something that provides such a benefit to so many people. So how, how did you get started in yoga or how long have you been doing yoga for? Wow. I, I've been practicing yoga for about six years. Um, I had a good friend suggest it to me. Um, I'd never even thought about trying it before that. Uh, I'm not, I wasn't very flexible. I wasn't into athletics. Um, but once I got started, um, pretty quickly, I grew to love it. Uh, I love the fact that it increased my flexibility and my strength. I like the breath work, the guided meditation. So really quickly, I was going several times a week or even there was a period where I would go every day because I loved it so much. Wow. Yeah, That's I know. Um, I don't do it as much anymore, but I still try to incorporate practices from yoga throughout my day, throughout my life, because I learned a lot from going. I think that's fantastic. I mean, the everyday thing is, I think what they call the practice, right? Going every day, showing up and with the class and combining all the energy, it's giving me goosebumps, combining all the energy of the class while you're doing your own practice, but you're energizing together in that class. I remember doing it every day. And this was probably for three months when core power yoga came out in San Diego in 2011 <laughs> or something. And I had shrunk about an inch and a quarter. And back then there was all these movie stars saying that you could gain your height back in yoga. And I'm a physical therapist. I thought, well, I'm sure it stretches things out and you spring back. And I remember right before I moved to New York city, I went back to the doctor and they measured me and I'd done three months of like five days a week of yoga. And I felt fantastic and people were starting to say, hey, you're looking taller. And I said, oh, I'm just standing in a mound in the sand when we were playing volleyball. But I went back to the doctor and they measured me and I gained a whole inch of my height back just from wow. stretching all those deep spinal rotators for people that have you know, back pain or a hunched upper back. It's really hard to stretch them. And in yoga, there's lots of those rotation and breathing positions that really help to elongate those tiny little muscles in the spine, have you had any spine issues or had any noticed anything like that with yoga? Definitely uh, flexibility. I was a person who, through most of my life, even when I was young, I couldn't touch my toes. Uh, being inflexible was kind of, or not flexible, was sort of something that I designed to. But yoga really showed me uh, that, wow, through practice and through uh, repetition, I could change that. 
and notice changes in my posture, um, partly because a lot of the stretches that I was introduced to in yoga, they were stretches I'd never heard of before or done before uh, in my life. Uh, they weren't things we did in gym class as a kid. They weren't things that I knew about uh, from everyday life. So especially things like heart openers, I hadn't really ever done them. I'd never done uh, stretching with blocks. So it was like a whole new world to me. I saw a lot of changes uh, in my body after doing yoga. I, I love that. I love how you mentioned on posture too, because it's something that I guess I don't really think of that when I'm using some stretches that I learned in yoga with my patients about posture, but that elongation of all those muscles, and I'm always harping on people about their posture. It's great to hear that that's one of the benefits that you received from doing these poses. I think that's something that I never, I'm going to have to use that more for uh, encouraging people with their posture. (laughs) Yeah, no, it, It was just a wealth of new information. Uh, The posture thing, um, it actually, it was great because before that, it had seemed like such kind of an annoying thing to worry about. You know, posture was such a struggle and a strain to think about. But after doing a lot of the heart opener things, I, I guess it's just doing it all the time, just a little bit of work. It really made it seem so much easier to me and so much simpler. Um, and now I just, uh, it's a little more automatic. I think, I think that's great. So let me ask you this now during the pandemic, all the studios were closed and I think they opened a little bit and tried to, and they might be open now, but what have you done over the past six or seven months since the studios have shut down or getting a yoga workout, whether you're doing zoom or YouTube or on your own practice, how, how has that changed for you? Or how do you feel about that now that you can't go somewhere to do it? Um, one thing I really feel grateful for is that I learned so much in person in the classes because now I have this feeling of slight independence where I can do certain things on my own or I can watch a video and not feel confused. I, I know that, okay, the instructor on the Zoom video or the YouTube video is showing down dog. And I heard so much personal instruction in real life that I feel like, okay, I can follow along. I can do this. So I incorporate things here and there when I feel like I need it. Um, But I do just feel really grateful that I got the in-person instruction. I feel for people who are starting their journey now because you're, you're, you're alone. I mean, even if the person is there in the zoom, um, they can't, see your body as well, or they can't come over to give you an adjustment or, uh, you know, a YouTube instructor can't respond. So um, I feel really grateful and lucky that I started before this. Um, but yeah. I think it's not, you know, it's not bad to start now. I, I feel really impressed by people who started exercising more in quarantine or started doing uh, more yoga practice because that's fabulous. And I am impressed with that that motivation and that drive to, you know, continue even now with this difficult situation. Yeah, that feeds in right to a a question I have from a viewer, which is, can you get a good yoga workout from YouTube videos? Or do you insist that people should get a yoga instructor? So Paula kind of just hit on that point. And you can get a good yoga workout from YouTube videos. And Paula had a great benefit from being instructed because the instructors can come over there and help you fix your pelvis because it's hard to, even if you're looking in the mirror, unless you're like a physical therapist or you're very body aware, it's hard to see that, oh, wow. Oh, that's crooked. Oh, wow. That's now the teacher moves you and you say, oh, that's straight. Wow. That's just insane. I, I really felt straight. And so the guidance of a yoga instructor is great, but if you're going to do YouTube videos at home, you can get a great workout. I think you just have to be careful or do it in moderation so that you don't strain something. There's beginner yoga classes. And I think, Paula, actually, you told me you were doing Ashtanga. Wait, no, you were doing Iyengar yoga, right? Yep. Which is about mm-hmm. alignment. So do you, do you know uh, much about the difference between Iyengar yoga and, and say like flow yoga? I, I don't think I've ever done Iyengar, although you think I should, I'm a physical therapist, but what do you, do you know the difference between the two or what does Iyengar tend to focus on? I'm not an expert, but to my layman's perception, I saw that a younger was really focused on um, 
alignment and the use of things like props so that if you couldn't do certain stretches as deeply as other people, you were still aligned correctly by using a block or using a bolster or uh, it was really focused on um, not injuring yourself, which is funny because I, I did get injured. So it just goes to show you all the best intentions. Sometimes things can happen, but um, you still do a flow though. You know, I still did sun salutations and uh, all of the typical poses that you would see in a vinyasa class. Um, I, I think the studio I went to was great because they tried to incorporate all different types of yoga so that you as a student um, got a chance to see a lot of different styles. And I, I would recommend that to anybody, you know, really checking out as many different styles as you can so that you can uh, have a more informed idea of what works for you. Yeah. That's a very good point. Uh, I remember doing yoga in Bali when I was living at this Gandhian ashram. In oh, wow. I know, late 20s. I kind of fell into it. I, I did a trip after working as a PT for three or four years, and I saved my money, and I, I took off for four or five months. And I ended up by a blessing at this Gandhian ashram where every morning they woke up at sunrise and did a chanting ceremony, and then we did yoga for an hour. And that was my real introduction to yoga. And it was... I said stretch yoga we held poses for long periods of time you felt like a million bucks afterward it got rid of my plantar fasciitis and 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 then when I moved back to San Diego afterward I did another stretch pose class where you kind of went against the wall and you held poses for long periods of time but they weren't holding poses standing up they were holding poses on your back or on your side with with big Mexican blankets and things to help yes. open up your chest. And I loved it. You almost wanted to fall asleep afterward. And then I got introduced to flow yoga. And I, after 15 minutes in my first class thought, when do we get the final Shavasana? When can I lay on my back and relax? But that it was work because you have to work on your core strength to hold the poses for this period of time. But also as you're flowing, you need to be able to engage your core. And that's something that I wanted to talk about having talked with you last night again about you having some back pain during some yoga poses. And I wanted to have you tell our viewers, like, what was your story? Like, how, how did you hurt your back or when did your back hurt? And what did you do? To, did you do anything to modify it during your classes? So pretty quickly, I started going to yoga fairly often. And one of the things I noticed very quickly also was that certain poses gave me back pain. But, you know, I'm not sure what to attribute, attribute my mindset to. But even though the teachers were saying, don't compare yourself to other people, um, everyone has their own process, you can be in child's pose at any point, even though I was hearing that in my mind, I was still sort of thinking, to advance in my practice, I should be able to do these poses. Um, and I should be able to go more deeply into them, increase my flexibility. So certain poses such as bridge or camel pose, anything where I had to arch my back, I felt pain, but I was trying to ignore it and work through it. Um, it you know, there's the difference, right? Between just feeling muscle fatigue and that sort of exercise pain and then feeling this pain of, ooh, wow, I stretched something too far. And I yeah. would still work through that. And I think slowly over time, um, it just built up to this head of where uh, it was too much. It was like the straw that broke the camel's back, <laughs> no pun intended. And um, I woke up one morning and I couldn't even bend over to put my socks on. I was in so much pain. I actually had to take time off of work. Um, wow. And at the time I was even trying to tell myself, oh, I don't think it's the yoga. Maybe it's uh, all the driving I have to do for my job because I sat in my car quite often too. Um, so I was, I was actually trying not to see that my yoga practice could be part of it um, until, oh, yeah. I, yeah, but it continued, you know, in yoga class, I would have pain and I started to talk to my instructors and ask them, what can I do here? What can I do there? And I really started to focus on doing things in a way that didn't cause pain. And that really changed things for me because that's when I really accepted the idea that it's an individual practice. Mm -hmm. So what if I'm the only one who can't do bridge? So what if I'm the only one in child's pose? Um, it's okay if one person tells me a certain technique and it doesn't work. And, you know, I don't have to be uh, 
be polite about it, but I just have to say, well, that didn't work for me and I have to try something else and just keep continuing. So actually that's the point where I think it really became a journey <laughs> to uh, learning about my body and accepting that I'm not necessarily gonna have the same outcome as everyone else in the class and, and really accepting that that message that had been said to me before was, which was, you know, this isn't about being a gymnast, it's about that mindfulness. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it was actually, in a way, it was roundabout kind of a good thing that I learned a lot about myself through this. That's a wonderful point. Thanks for sharing that. I think that's huge to come to the awareness. And and I haven't been injured all my life, have had to battle with accepting that my body can't do what other people's bodies can, or my body can do it, but once a week or once a month, because if I do it more than that, I'm down with an injury. And you never, of course, you said you didn't want to attribute it to yoga because you love yoga. And so you don't want to attribute the pain to something that you love and you know is good for you that you enjoy doing. So you think, oh, I must have lifted something or maybe I was in my car the wrong way. It's too much sitting and all those things can cause your back pain. But it was so mature of you and open of you to modify your positions and learn that, hey, my body can't do this that way. I do that all the time in my yoga classes. And I think it's a huge point for people to hear that we are all unique and we all have our own body types, our own sizes and flexibilities. And we're each great. Some people are never going to touch their toes. Or I think you told me you were able to stretch your hamstrings more in doing yoga because you were never flexible. And that's good. You don't have to go flat and kiss your knees. (laughs) You're trying to gain flexibility, right? And if you hurt to kiss your knees, then you don't kiss your knees. But if you get a little inch further, then you're a little bit more flexible. And that's just something that's hard not to do is compare yourself to everyone around you in the room. And then you see all these beautiful straight bodies and you're, and I'm kind of like bent over one way. You just try to do the best that your body can do while you're breathing and not push it too far too fast. I I love what you said, Paula. (laughs) Yeah. And I think, um, It is really, like you said, a process of maturing and and recognizing that um, in life, like the biggest competition you have is just yourself, to just better yourself, not to be competing with other people, but trying to be the best version of yourself. And I think when I started seeing it that way, it actually just improved my yoga practice so much because I was getting more out of it. Like it wasn't helping me so much when I'm hurting myself. And it's actually that sort of putting me in this state where I'm less flexible. I can't do as much. I have to take time off and, you know, taking time away from it. I saw, you know, oh, all the gains I had in other areas sort of withered away a little because I can't practice at all. So, you know, practicing minimally is more beneficial to me than trying to go 110%, which of course they, the instructors never advocate for you to try to do that. But <laughs> I think um, for me, in the beginning, since it was something that um, I was intimidated by, I was trying to do that, you know, that that factor of being afraid of not being good at it was there in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's so true. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. So, so we have a question speaking, we're talking about back pain and, and pushing yourself too hard, and then having to take a step back from something you love, like yoga. Uh, one of the questions is, can yoga be a replacement for physical therapy. And um, I think it's funny, I have two of my great colleagues who were uh, students of mine uh, when we have to do an internship and they have beautiful combined yoga physical therapy practices. And I do not believe that yoga is a replacement for physical therapy. And Paula probably proves it, right? Because you had to back off, but it's Mm -hmm. such a great adjunct to physical therapy. I use it all the time. And my two dear friends who are yoga instructors and physical therapists have built their practice about integrating yoga and physical therapy into their treatments. And, and one of the things with on the back pain front that I was asking Paula last night was when you bent forward, did you suck it in or did anyone ever tell you to suck it in? And Paula, what did you tell me about that? Did somebody ever tell you to suck it in? So, you know, 
we were talking and I was thinking in different, in some poses, yes, and then in others, no. And I think you were kind of talking about um, sort of generalizing that skill and using it more throughout the day. And I thought, oh yeah, I guess sometimes they'd say it, but I'm sure I'm not doing it all the time and I'm not doing it as often as I could be. And I don't think I generalized it to lots of different situations because I do get back pain when I bend over. And I don't think I was using that as a technique nearly as much as I could. And I, you know, I tried it after you said it. I tried it and I was like, oh yes, she's right. <laughs> of course, you know, she's totally right. And I was like, oh, this is really helping me out right now. I need to put a little reminder on um, somewhere. <laughs> I don't know, just to be like, suck it in when you bend over and to see it everywhere on the wall, maybe just like post it around my apartment. Because it was Do good. It. Yeah, I make these little bands that say suck it in. I just gave it to a patient yesterday. This one says sit up straight, but uh, he he came in, he was he was 87 years old and his back was still bothering him. And he said he was really trying to work on his posture, but he just was forgetting to suck it in. And I said, I hate to say this to you because this is my big mission, right? To get the low back pain percentage down and to spread the word about sucking it in. I said to him, I hate to say this, but your back pain will never go away if you don't suck it in. It won't because when you suck it in, you engage your deepest abdominal muscle, which fires with your deepest back muscle and gives you an anatomical girdle. And when you have back pain, that mechanism has been disrupted. And definitely the deepest back muscles with one episode of back pain have been disrupted. So I told him that and I gave him the band and he came back and said, all I did this weekend was focus on sucking it in. And he goes, it does feel better. It does feel better. And I told Paula that last night, Hey, make sure you suck it in before you bend over. Make sure you suck it in before you reach for your refrigerator door. Before, be sure you suck it in before you bend to wash your face or when you're brushing your teeth because you're activating that mechanism that has been disrupted, that is not working for you during your daily activities. It's consciously activating a mechanism that was designed to function automatically. And the more you activate it consciously, the more you're prepping it and strengthening it to get back that brain generated mechanism where it'll start to operate automatically again. So, and I told you, I told you last night that when you suck it in, I promise you one thing, you're either not going to have back pain or it's definitely going to be less. <laughs> yeah. And you know what you said about the automatic, like that was really helpful to me because I always had this question of, you know, I've been told before, Oh, suck it in. But I always thought, well, they don't, that one, that lady over there doesn't have to suck it in, or I never had to suck it in before, or it's so hard to remember. But I think when you said, well, it was automatic at one point and you're trying to, you know, retrain your brain and your nerves, you know, I was like, oh, okay, that it makes sense to me because I'm kind of a why person. And when I understand the why a little better, it helps me just follow through. I, I'm not sure what's going on there, but when I understand why I'm like, okay. Now I'm, I buy in more or something, you know. That's helpful for me to hear too, is to help people understand the why. So let, who wants to learn how to suck it in? I've got two videos, they're quick to show you. It's uh, video number two, let's play that so you can learn how to suck it in. To learn to engage your trans versus abdominus correctly and engage your anatomical girdle, I'm gonna show you how to do it in standing first. So you're gonna stand up and I'll visualize that for you. You're gonna put one hand on your diaphragm here, one hand on your belly button below, and you're gonna pull your belly button in like that. So you just suck it in, suck it in. You don't wanna pull it in from here too, because then you stop your diaphragm from breathing. You can hear how it changes the sound of my voice when I do that. You just wanna pull it in from here, your transverse abdominus. And if you see it from the front, the fibers run this way. So when you pull your belly button in, you see it shrink my waist. Belly button in, belly button in. So practice that in standing first. That way you can use it, pull your belly button in, bend to pick something up. Pull your belly button in, reach for the car door. Pull your belly button in, put your shirt on up over your head. Enjoy. So that teaches you how to engage it in standing just so that you can get an idea of what to do. But if you go to video number three, I'll show you how to engage it in your neutral spine position. To find the position of your neutral spine, you wanna lay on a firm surface. So if you can't get to the floor, you can use your bed, but I'm gonna to explain to you why it's better to do it on a firm surface if you can get down to one. So I'm gonna show you on the ground here. So I'll move my arms so you can see. 
So you want to have the point of contact with your tailbone and your rib cage here, but not in your lower back right here. So you don't want to pin your back flat by tucking your buttocks under. And you can see as I roll my pelvis like that, and you don't want to arch your back up all the way like that. You want to find a position that's in the middle where you're resting on your tailbone. And to engage your anatomical girdle, you want to suck it in. So you want to pull it in from your belly button and blow like this. Here, pull it in. You can see it narrow in my waist right here. Suck it in. What you don't want to do is you don't want to pull it in like this and stop your diaphragm from moving either. You want to pull in your belly button so that you can still breathe here and use your diaphragm while you keep this in. So learn to pull your belly button in and then breathe. How you could go wrong is if you pull your belly button in and you tuck your buttocks under like that, because what that does is it uses the big six pack muscle, your rectus abdominis. That's not what you want to do. That's more for just range of motion. If you need to get your back moving, when you learn to engage your anatomical girdle, you want it to be in neutral spine, point of contact with your tailbone and your rib cage, small space between your low back, and then you Pull your belly button in and you enjoy. So if you want more information, I have a link that I can post for you to an article that I published last year. It's free, it's open access, it has illustrations and it explains to you more in detail about the transverse abdominis. So Paula, we have about a minute left and I know that I was so inspired with talking to you Friday and I was so inspired talking to you last night about your experiences with yoga and how you modified your body and your positions after you'd hurt yourself is there anything that else that you want to share with everyone about yoga and your experiences um i'd just like to say you know thank you so much for having me and i totally agree with you that yoga is a wonderful uh addition to your physical activity and you should also you know consult a physical therapist or a doctor if you're having pain and it's not okay to be having pain. Uh, you don't need to work through it. Uh, you can just talk with someone about it and everyone's going to be different. And, but still yoga's great and it's a wonderful thing to add to your daily routine. That's great. And I agree 100%. I love it. Thank you so much, Paula, for coming out and sharing your time with me. And thank you. Thank Tech Hawaii and all our sponsors and donors for allowing us to bring this to you today. Everyone stay safe, aloha, and life is better when you listen to your physical therapist.